going on folks? It's Blue here from Blue Bears Games, and for today's video, I was supposed to start unboxing and upgrading the March of the Machine Commander Precons, but I decided to delay that for a week or two. Instead, I got the itch to finally replace my 5 color commander that's part of my personal 32 deck challenge. For those of you that are unaware, in March of 2021, I presented what was supposed to fill the 5 color deck in my 32 deck challenge using Golos Tireless Pilgrim, but then on June 16th, the Rules Committee unceremoniously decided to ban the card from the format. I understand why they did it, but I really did enjoy using that card for my Mazes and Wincon. I'm not gonna lie, it hurt a little. I wasn't a fan of any of the alternatives for a 5 color build, so I was kind of stuck in a holding pattern to replace the deck. Then, in January of 2023, I was finally given an answer to my problem. Phyrexia All Will Be One was released, and in that set was a card called Urtet Remnant of Memnarch. The only issue was you could only acquire it through collector's boosters or from the sample packs in the Commander Precons. As you know, I don't buy collector packs right now because they are too expensive for my budget, and nobody I knew had one. Also, I was so far behind on unboxing the Precons that I wouldn't get to the Phyrexia ones for a little bit. Fast forward to last week, where I finally opened the Corrupting Influence Precon, and lo and behold, out popped Urtet from the sample pack. I've been a huge fan of the Mir tribe since the original Mirrodin set, so I knew I had my replacement finally. You can even see my love for them in my early videos where I made two $20 budget decks using them in 2019. Now with all that backstory out of the way, let me tell you what Urtet does. Urtet is three colorless mana to cast for a legendary artifact Mir creature with three fun abilities. The first ability is that whenever you cast a mirror spell, you create a 1-1 colorless mirror artifact creature token. The second ability is at the beginning of combat on your turn, you untap each mirror you control. And the third ability is that you can pay 1 mana of each color to put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on each mirror you control. You can only activate this ability during your turn, but you can activate it as many times as you can afford to do so. So when you look at those abilities, the first thing you probably think is Mirror Tribal slash Typal, which is exactly what I want people to think. In reality, I built this as a deck that uses a lot of different infinite combos, but with the guise of being a Mirror Tribal slash Typal deck. I'm going to show you what I mean, but before I do, I want to show you what I chose to protect the deck with. The sleeves that I chose are Dragon Shield Matte Gold Sleeves. These are the sleeves I originally had Golos in, so naturally this was the obvious choice. I chose this color simply because gold is how multicolor cards are represented in Magic, and being a 5 color deck, it doesn't get much more gold than that. The deck box that I chose is actually a placeholder that I've stolen from my partner until I can get my hands on more of my own Arcane Fortress Stained Glass Radiant 100 Plus deck boxes. If you haven't seen my review on these boxes yet, I recommend you watch that video after you've done this one. These boxes are amazing, and if you do decide to purchase any, remember to use discount code BLUEBEAR at checkout to save an additional 5% off your order. Now let me show you my newest addition to my 32 deck challenge builds, Urtet, Remnant of Memnarch. So like I always like to do, I'll start with the land base. It's a lot of mana fixing lands because it's a five color deck. And then after that, it's a couple utility things that go along with artifacts and do a couple other things. So Command Tower is obvious because it's a five color deck and it's the best land for a five color deck in Commander. Then we got all 10 shock lands. So it's every single one of them because again, five color mana base. We need as much as we can. So I went with all 10 shock lands. And then I went with all 10 of the check lands because if we have the shock lands, naturally I want things to come into play untapped. And I don't have a lot of basics to go with because it's a five color deck. So I went with all this, the check lands. So that's all of these. And there's all 10 right there. And then I'm trying something. I went with all 10 of the pathways. I do have one missing because it's in another deck. I will switch it over. It's the blue white one, but I went with all 10 pathways so that hopefully it fixes the mana, and there's where the missing one is, I have to go find it. And then the utility lands. I went with Spire of Industry first. It comes into play untapped, it taps to add a colorless, and then you can tap it and pay one life to add one mana of any color, but you cannot activate that unless you control an artifact, and in this deck that should not be an issue. This actually took place of the other one that is an artifact based land that taps to add a mana of any color, but it actually sacrifices itself if you don't control an artifact, and I thought this was a better option because no matter what, you'll be able to tap it for some kind of mana. The Mycosynth Gardens is actually a superstar in this deck. It comes into play untapped, taps to add a colorless mana. Then you can filter by paying one and tapping it to add one mana of any color. And then I will explain this at the end of the video, but the last ability on it is a superstar. You pay X and tap it 
to have the Mycosynth Gardens become a copy of any non-token artifact that you control with mana value of X, and that will be explained later on in the video. Academy Ruins, again, comes into play on tap to tap Static Colorless, and then you can pay one blue, one generic, and tap it to put an artifact from your graveyard on top of your library. There is a lot of that effect in this deck because I want to make sure I get the artifacts I need out in play. Inventor's Fair, it has this ability that says, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more artifacts, you gain a life. It taps to add a colorless, and then you can pay four and tap it, sacrifice it, and search your library for an artifact card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle, and then activate only if you control three or more artifacts, which this deck will. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I always put one type of land destruction land into my decks, and this is the version I chose. This actually came from the original Golos deck. As far as the ramp section goes, the actual quote-unquote ramp, I only have four cards. It's pretty simple. It's a Soul Ring, an Arcane Signet, a Chromatic Lantern because it's a five-color deck and we need to have access to all colors at some time. And then this is a Mirror Tribal deck. So Mirror Reservoir, it's three to cast. It taps to add two colors to your mana pool. However, you can only spend that mana to cast a Mirror spell or activate Mirror abilities. But the bottom ability of paying three and tapping it to return target Mirror card from your grave at your hand is why this is in here. But the bonus is that it can help you cast some of those Mirror quicker. As far as the creature section goes, this is one of the reasons why the ramp section is very low, because a lot of the mirror tapped add mana to your mana pool. So we'll start with Plague Mirror. Two to cast, it's a 1-1 with Infect that taps to add a colorless mana to your mana pool, and that's why there's very few ramp cards, because there's a lot of mana dorks in here. Such as Iron Mirror, which does tap for red, Silver Mirror, which taps for blue, Gold Mirror, which taps for white, and then Copper Mirror, which taps for green. And unfortunately, I didn't have the Lead Mirror. I can't find it, so I ordered one before the video. I had to get one, so it wasn't there, so I'll superimpose it in here. Then you got a Mirror Retriever, because you, you know, you want to be able to get stuff back from your graveyard, so it's a good one for Mirror. Mirror Welder, it's a 3D cast 1-4 with Imprint, and the Imprint says you tap it and exile target artifact card from a graveyard, not yours, any graveyard. And then Mirror Welder has all activated abilities of all cards exiled with it. So if somehow, some way, somebody's soul ring gets binned, you can actually remove it from the game, and now Mirror Welder will tap to add two colors. And this actually has ramifications that I'll talk about later. Shimmer Mirror, it is a 3D cast 2-2 two -two with Flash that says you may cast artifact spells as if though they had Flash. So that's nice, especially in a mostly artifact deck. Alloy Mirror, 3D cast 2-2 two -two that taps to add a mana of any color. Palladium Mirror, 3D Chaos 2-2 two -two that taps to add two colorless mana to your mana pool. And then the, the best card in this deck is Mirror Galvanizer. It's a 3D Chaos 2-2 two -two that is an anthem for all of your mirror. It gets them plus one, plus one. And then it has an ability that you can pay one and tap it to untap each other mirror that you control. That plays with a lot of shenanigans that I will, again, explain at the end of the video. Mirror Kinsmith is a 4 to cast 3-1 that when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a mirror card and put it in your hand. So it's a tutor for mirror. Mirror Battle Sphere is a 7 to cast 4-7 that when it enters the battlefield, you create four 1-1 one, one colorless mirror artifact creature tokens, which is very good for a lot of combinations that you can do. And then also, whenever it attacks, you may tap X untapped mirror that you control, and if you do, it gets plus X plus 0 to end a turn, and deals X damage to the player or planeswalker it's attacking. So it's good for combinations, it's good for clogging the board, it's also good at, on its own as dealing direct damage to, to players or planeswalkers and also attacking that player. The other little sub-theme in here is going to be clones. So we start off with Glass Pool Mimic. It's a 3D cast 0-0 that you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature that you control, except it's also a shapeshifter rogue in addition to its other types. And there's a reason for the sub-theme, and I'll get to that again at the end of the video. Phyrexian Metamorph. It is a Phyrexian blue and three. So Phyrexian mana is either whatever the color is. So this one is blue. So one blue, or you can pay two life instead. So this is going to cost you one blue and three, or two life and three. And then it says you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or creature on the battlefield, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. So you can copy your opponent's commanders if you want, or combo pieces if you want. Clever Impersonator is a 4 to cast 0, 0 and you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any non-land permanent on the battlefield. And there is an actual reason for it. I will get to that soon. There were a couple that I did not have. I had a couple other clones that I wanted. That's where the update video will come in. I gotta go get them. Morit of the Frost. It's 2 blue, 1 green, and 2, so 5 total mana value. It's a 0, 0 changeling, so it's every creature type, so this will count as a mirror. And it says, you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of a permanent that you control, except it's legendary 
and snow in addition to its other types. And if it's a creature, it enters with an additional plus one plus one counter and also has changeling. So it's a mirror wherever it is. It's in your library, in your graveyard, in your hand. It's a mirror, which is what I wanted. Tameshi Reality Architect is a 3D cast 2-3. It says, whenever one or more non-creature permanents are returned to hand, not just your hand, draw a card, and this ability triggers only once each turn, and then it has an ability underneath of that, that for a white and X, you can return a land that you control to its owner's hand to return target artifact or enchantment card with a mana value of X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield and activate it only as a sorcery. So you can go ahead and get artifacts back for just returning a land to your hand. You can go and get the few enchantments that I have in here back, so I'll show you those in a little bit. Teshar Ancestor's Apostle is for the cast for a 2-2 flying bird cleric that says whenever you cast a historic spell, you return target creature card with converted mana cost or mana value now of three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. To the battlefield, not your hand, so it'll come into play. Historic spells are artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. All of those are considered historic, and there are a bunch of all of those in this deck. Urza, Prince of Krug. It is for the cast for a 2-3 that gives... All artifact creatures you control plus two plus two. It's a good bonus because this deck is trying to portray that it's a simply mere tribal deck. But the second ability actually has combo ramifications. For each six you can pay into it, you create a token that's a copy of target artifact you control, except it's a 1-1 one, one soldier creature in addition to its other types. So if you create a soul ring, you have one in play, you create a soul ring. It's now a 1-1 one, one Soul Ring. So the only downside to that is if it's a creature, so it doesn't have to do its abilities because it has Summoning Sickness. But other than that, this has combination ramica ramifications. The last creature is Jorah, Weatherlight Captain. It's a 4 cast 3-3 that says whenever you cast a Historic Spell, you draw a card. So anytime you cast a Legendary, an Artifact, or a Saga, you will, I will draw a card. The instants and Sorceries of this deck I have split up into four different categories. We have Removal, Tutoring, end game stuff and protection. So I'll start off with the removal. I had a specific thing I was going for here. I wanted to be able to remove anything I wanted off the board on single targeting. So everything in here has a theme to it. So we start with Stroke of Midnight. It's one of the newer cards from Wilds of Eldraine. It's 3 to cast and it destroys target non-land permanent. And that's the theme. Everything had to be a permanent, not just a specific type. So this one destroys a non-land permanent. Its controller gets a 1-1 one, one human creature token, but that's minimal for what I'm trying to do here. And it's an instant. Mythos of Nethril is a 3D cast instant, and this one will have to be explained. I'll read what it says to you, but I'll explain what it means. It says, destroy target non-land permanent if it's a creature, or if green-white was spent to cast a spell. So what that actually means, so that it's explained, is if you pay one black and anything other than a green and white for the two, you destroy a creature. If you pay green, white, and black, you can destroy any non-land permanent on the board. That's what that is saying. It's just not really the best way to say it. And again, it's a non-land permanent. Abrupt Decay is a 2 decay instant that can't be countered, and it destroys target non-land permanent with converted mana cost or mana value of 3 or less. Vindicate, 3 decay sorcery that destroys target permanent, any permanent. Voidrend is a 3 decay instant that can't be countered again, and it says destroy target non-land permanent. See the theme? I just wanted to be able to destroy whatever I wanted. Mor Mortality Spear is a 4 decay instant that can cost 2 less if you've gained life this turn, and it destroys a non-land permanent. Board wipe time, all is dust. Seven to cast tribal sorcery, Eldrazi. It says each player sacrifices all colored permanents he or she controls. This gets around hexproof, this gets around shroud, this gets around indestructible. Sacrificing gets around all of that. So that's why that's in here. Their name is Death. It is six to cast for a sorcery that says destroy all non artifact creatures because all of my creatures, minus a few here or there, are artifacts. Same thing with organic extinction. This one is 10 to cast. Destroys all non-artifact creatures. However, it has improvised, which is to say that your artifacts can help pay for one for each one you tap. So a lot of the creatures in here are mana dorks, but not all of them. And not every artifact in here is a creature, so it will help pay for this cost because that's a very high uh, mana value. Ruinous Ultimatum. Two black, three white, seven red, seven total converted mana value for a sorcery that destroys all non-land permits that your opponents control. You see what my theme was here? I just wanted to be able to destroy everything. So that was the removal. Then we got tutors, and this section is actually quite large for a deck. I have as many tutors as I had left over from all other decks. So we start with Enlightened Tutor. It goes and gets an Artifact or Enchantment and puts it on top of your library. Mystical Tutor goes and gets an Instant or Sorcery and puts it on top of your library for you. These are all at instant speed. Worldly Tutor goes and gets a Creature and puts it on top of my library. Demonic Tutor goes and gets any card I want and puts it in my hand. Eldamri's Call goes and gets any creature I want and puts it in my hand. 
Fabricate goes and gets any artifact that I want and puts it in my hand. Grim Tutor goes and gets any card I want, puts it in my hand, and then I lose three life, which shouldn't be that big of a deal. And then Beseech the Mirror is what I'm going to give a try. So it's three black and one, so four total mana value. It has an ability called Bargain. It says you may sacrifice an artifact, an enchantment, or a token, which this deck is everything except for the enchantments. I don't want to sacrifice my enchantments. It says to search your library for a card and exile it face down, then shuffle your library. If this spell was bargained, so if you sacrifice an artifact or a token, so if it was bargained, you may cast the exiled card for free if the mana value of that spell was four or less. If you didn't, put the exiled card in your hand instead. Okay? If you need that explained more, let me know in the comments, but that's about the best way I can put it. So that's the last tutor that I have in here. The parts that I'm going to tell you about now are all for the combo of having infinite mana and doing something with it. I need game enders. So the first thing I chose was Comet Storm because you can split it off into whatever you need. So when you have infinite mana, you want to be able to kill everybody. So Comet Storm is the first one. The second one is Exsanguinate. It makes each opponent lose X life. And you gain life, you go to life loss this way. Hopefully when you're casting this, it doesn't matter about the life gain because you should be wiping the entire board. Expansion and Explosion is actually something I may or may not take out. I did want Torment of Hellfire in here, but I don't have an extra one, so I'm going to have to go get one, and it will replace this. So you're not going to worry about the Expansion part. That lets you copy an instant or sorcery spell that's mana value 4 or less. I don't care about that. It's the Explosion part, which is double blue, double red, and X. It deals X damage to any target, and target player draws X cards. So technically, this can actually take two people off the board by dealing one damage and drawing one person's library out. So I do want Torment of Hellfire in here, though. And then this one's the fun one. This is my little way of being funny. This is not a serious deck, by the way. This is more for casual fun. Capsize is a 3 to cast instant that with a buyback of 3 that returns target permanent to its owner's hand. I want to return everybody's lands, everybody's everything on their board to their hand with the infinite mana, and just watch them scoop. It's just going to be something I do for fun. It's not really serious. Again, this deck is not serious, so that's why that's in there. The last card is for protection, and it's actually in the name. It's the Fairy's Protection. If you don't know what this does, I'll let you read it, but it pretty much protects you for the most part for an entire turn. So the next section, I'll go over the utility artifacts. Everything in here is utility, but they're also partially combo pieces, which I will explain all the combos at the end of the video. There are a lot in here. So Swiftfoot Boots, 2 to cast equipment. We know it gives a creature hexproof and haste and equips for one. I'm going to try this card out. It's Agatha's Soul Cauldron. I opened it up in one of my packs for Wilds of Eldraine. It was a lucky hit, and I kind of want to give it a shot because I, I pulled it. It's 2 to cast for a legendary artifact. Um, you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to activate abilities of creatures you control. All creatures you control, with plus one, plus one counters on them, have all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Then it has an ability that says you can tap it to exile a target card from a graveyard, and when a creature card is exiled this way, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature that you control. Again, I'm going to try this out and see how it works. It looks fun. Sword of the Meek is a two to cast equipment. Equips for two. That's not going to matter. Uh, equipped creature gets plus one, plus two, and then whenever a one, one creature enters the battlefield under your control... You may return Sword of the Meek from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to that creature. This is a combo piece. I will explain that in a little bit. Mirage Mirror is a 3 cast artifact that you, when it's out, you pay 2, and it becomes a copy of target artifact, creature, enchantment, or land until end of turn. Staff of Domination, you really should know what this card is. This is one of the best outlets for infinite mana in the game. It can let you gain infinite life. It can let you untap creatures to facilitate that infinite. You can tap target creature, which could basically tap down an entire side of a board, or you can draw your entire library, and it untaps itself for one. It's a very good combo piece for all infinite mana combos. Clock of Omens, again, another combo piece that I'll explain later. It's a four to cast artifact that you can tap two untapped artifacts you control to untap target artifact. Mirror Matrix is a five to cast artifact that is indestructible, and it gives all mirror plus one plus one, which is a bonus, but not really why it's in here. It's in here because for every 5 you put into it, you can put a 1-1 one, one Mirror Artifact Creature Token into play. Mirror Turbine is a 5 Decay Artifact as well. You can tap it to put a 1-1 one, one Colorless Mirror Artifact Creature Token onto the battlefield, or create a 1-1. One, one. And then you can tap it and tap 5 untapped Mirror that you control to search your library for a Mirror Creature card and put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle. So it's a tutor for Mirror. Specifically, I'm looking for a 1 in particular. Time Sieve. It's a blue and a black for an artifact that you tap it and sacrifice five artifacts to take an extra turn after this one. Absolutely a combo piece. Thopter Foundry is one blue and either one black or one white. So it's either a blue black or a blue white. You pay one and sacrifice a non-token artifact and you create a one one blue Thopter artifact creature token with flying and you gain a life. 
The enchantments that I have in here are light, but they are really good for what they are. Obviously, a Rhystic Study. We're in a five-color deck. You have access to blue. Why wouldn't you play it? Phyrexian Scriptures is a four-to-cast saga with three chapters. When it enters play, you read chapter one, which is to put a plus one, plus one counter on up to one target creature. That creature becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. On your next upkeep, chapter two will read, and it's destroy all non-artifact creatures. And then on the next turn after that, chapter three will go off and it will exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. So the cool thing about this is this is an enchantment that removes itself from your board so you can get it back later and reuse it, which is the reason for the card that gives me enchantments back. And the last one is actually something that I will explain. If you are playing red and blue or have access to red and blue and you are playing an artifact deck, Storm the Vault is an auto-include no matter what. It is a Fortecast legendary enchantment. So this actually will trigger Historic. And it says... Whenever one or more creatures that you control deal combat damage to a player, create a colorless treasure token, okay? That part is all well and good. It's the second part and what it does that really makes a difference. It says at the beginning of your end step, if you control five or more artifacts, you transform it. Now, it doesn't have to be treasure tokens that it creates, any artifacts, and this deck is full artifacts. The reason for that, and I'll show you, is because this is actually a Talarian Academy without the name. It is not banned. It becomes Vault of Catlican. It's a land that can either tap to add one mana of any color to your mana pool, which I highly doubt you're ever going to use. It also has the ability to tap to add one blue mana to your mana pool for each artifact you control, a la Talarian Academy. I believe that anytime you have an opportunity to play with one of the most powerful cards in the game, you take it. The last card of the deck is a Planeswalker. I only have one because I can't find the one I need. I have another one I want. But I'll start off with a Tezzeret the Seeker, and then I'll go look for the other one when I finally get it. I'll do it in the update video. It's a 5 to cast Planeswalker that enters play with 4 loyalty counters. It has 3 loyalty abilities. The first one is an uptick of 1. You untap up to 2 target artifacts, which is not bad. The second ability is to pay X loyalty counters, up to however many it has on it. And you will search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost or mana value now of X or less, and put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle. So it's a tutor for artifacts for however many loyalty you spend. And then it's ultimate. It's not the greatest ultimate. However, it can be a game ender depending on how the board state is. For minus five loyalty, artifacts you control, all of them become five, five artifact creatures until end of turn. So all those artifacts you have on the board will be five fives. And then you have buffs in here for the mirror. So they might get a little bit bigger. And then you may be able to swarm a board and win with it. So combat based win. It's a tutor. There's a lot of good in this one. So the last part of this video, I will go over the combos that this deck can do. I don't think I will cover all of them because I believe I am missing one or two, but I will cover the ones that I know are there for a fact. I'll start by showing you the card that is the most important for making infinite mana, Mere Galvanizer. There are many ways that you can utilize this card, but the easiest requires a second copy of it on the board to get going. That's why I included cards like the Mycosynth Gardens, Mirage Mirror, and all of the clone cards. With two copies of Galvanizer without Summoning Sickness on the board, you simply need enough Mana Dork Mirror out to produce two or more mana. All you need to do is tap them all for mana, and use one of that mana to activate one of the Galvanizers. Then all you do from there is simply alternate untapping all of the Mirror between the two, and voila! Infinite mana. There is also an alternate way to do it without a second copy of Galvanizer as well. What you need is Clock of Omens, along with the Galvanizer, a couple of Mirror Mana Dorks, and a couple of extra random Mirror. For this, you tap the Mana Dorks to add mana to your pool, use one mana to activate the Galvanizer and untap all Mirror you control, tap the Mana Mirror again, then use the two extra Mirror to activate the Clock to untap the Galvanizer, then rinse and repeat. The next way to make infinite mana uses Mirror Welder. For this to work, what you need is a Staff of Domination and any other artifact that can produce two or more mana imprinted on the Welder. It will tap to produce the mana, and you simply use one of that mana to untap itself thanks to the Staff of Domination's first ability. The next infinite combo uses Sword of the Meek and Thopter Foundry. With both of these on the field, you activate Thopter Foundry, sacrificing the sword. You will create a 1-1 Thopter, which will trigger the sword's ability to return itself to the battlefield and attach to that token. This itself isn't infinite because you need mana to activate the foundry. However, if you have a time sieve in play, you only need access to 5 mana to take an extra turn, which you can do over and over on each of those extra turns. So that's all the combos I have time for right now, but I'm sure there are more that involve some combination of the Mere Battlesphere and or Urza somewhere in there. I do know if I added an Ashnod's Altar, it would make a few more combos, but I feel that that may be overkill. I'll test this out and see what shakes loose and let you know when I do an update video eventually. 
If you see any that I may have missed, though, let me know in the comments section, as I'm sure I've missed something somewhere. And there you have it, my fellow spell slingers, my own personal Urtet Remnant of Memnarch build that is a replacement for my now banned Golos 5-color build for the 32 deck challenge. As I mentioned earlier, this is more for fun than anything. I just want to see what crazy things I can do with it to win, and I'm sure there will be some changes made to it after some rigorous testing. That's all for now, but be sure to check back next week as I believe I'll be starting the March of the Machine pre-con videos, but that's not set in stone, so you'll just have to wait and see. One last thing though before I go. This week, the channel got its very first membership from a longtime subscriber and friend of the channel, Joe Lasher. You may not remember, but Joe was featured on this channel once before in a video I did for Christmas Day of 2021. Many thanks, and I hope I continue to entertain you on those long rides driving your truck. Thank you all for watching, and please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet, and if you're in the market for a cool new deck box, visit our sponsor at www.arcane-fortress.com and use discount code BLUEBEAR at checkout if you order anything for an additional 5% savings. Have a great week, and I'll see you soon.